Some of the parents were, were talking amongst themselves and uh, they were talking about the fact that there were going to be you know, some pretty serious curricular and pedagogical changes going on. And I just opened up the school's website and started reading through it and just starting to understand, you know, what, what is diversity, equity, and inclusion according to them and what's involved in the programming and, and what are they doing in the name of this. And as I, as I was reading it, they essentially listed, you know, the activities that they were doing and the consultants that they were using and all the different um, changes that they were making. And I focused on, on the consultants that they were using. And all I did was just take these names and type them into Google and see what popped up. And from there, their social media feeds popped up or actual newspaper articles popped up about these folks. One of them that was teaching microaggressions to fifth graders was in three or four major national newspapers and international newspapers for organizing an online mobbing session of her Jewish students while she was a professor. Another one had a social media feed that was just chock full of ideas like love of literature and objectivity and individualism are akin to white supremacy. And now my red flags were going off because I was like, these values are completely antithetical to the enlightenment values or the liberal values, if you will, that we hold dear, that are supposedly part of a progressive education, that we treat each other as individuals. I tried to contact my daughter's teacher who is on the board. And I said, I wanted to talk to you before school starts. Is there gonna be any changes? Can you just tell me directly? And she said, well, we have to bring in the administrator. I said, that's fine. I wanna to talk, to, I wanna find out before school starts, before everything's crazy. I just wanna know from you, I wanna know definitely it's not gonna be any curriculum changes. As I was researching, I started to take notes. And then instead of taking notes, I took screenshots. And I made a slideshow of all of these different consultants and all of the different documentation that was, you know, that the other parents were sharing with each other, you know, messages from the DEI committee, messages from the teachers, and the public uh, social media feeds of these consultants. And in my view, the juxtaposition was so enormous between those two places that the average parent would just look at this and say, this makes no sense. You know, we have to get a handle on this, right? And so I had that in my hand and we were going back and forth to each other. Should we send it to the parents? Should we not send it to the parents? And we, sent, we set a date to ourselves that we wanted to have a meeting and we were getting rebuffed over and over again. And finally we said, all right, we're gonna send it out by this date. All right, this is after school starts. We wanted to do all this before with them so that we would get this out of the way and start the school year fresh, but couldn't get a meeting. So as luck would have it, as we sent this out to the parent body at large, their letter came in and said, okay, let's meet next week. A mom who's on this board committee, she said, you know, had we known we would have responded, had we known you were ready to write a letter and you were that angry, I mean, yeah. you, do we have to really be that angry to get a meeting? They reacted to it by saying, okay, we're going to put on a town hall. Okay, but the town hall wasn't a town hall in the traditional sense where you, you have an audience and you talk back and forth and maybe respectfully exchange ideas. It was basically them making a video and you watching it. And the video did not answer anything about what we had put forth as you know the, the, the items of concern. It just basically redefines the issue or straw mans the issue into something that you know that you never had an objection to. So I said, let, let us condense this down to just five simple points. The use of these consultants, are they still on board? or are they uh, not going to be on board anymore buying uh, materials from Pollyanna. The racially segregated parental groups on campus, which were called Witnessing Whiteness, which was for white people and people of color affinity group for, I guess, non-white people. The makeup and structure of the DEI committee. And the fifth one was the school's social media presence. I gave him the five. She said, okay, I understand what you're saying. Uh, I'll get back to you in a week. Let me have some time to formulate my answers. The week came and went. Uh, she said she was very busy. She couldn't answer. Another week came. And at the end of that week, I said, you know, do you have this yet? She said, no, I don't. Uh, I, I don't have it. Uh, maybe we'll have it next week. So now we're three weeks out and again, another delay. 
And I think it was the fourth week where finally, instead of saying, I'll have it to you in another week, it just, look, I didn't do it. It's unusual for me to get emotional, but I was frustrated because I didn't know why it would be so difficult to just say yes, no, yes, no. There doesn't have to be war and peace level responses to this. And I just wrote back, I said, look, we've been waiting for this for a month. We've been very patient. These parents wanna know, we wanna know what's going on. If you don't tell us what's going on in the next couple of days, I think I said the next three days, we're going to basically go to the public I'm a member of FAIR, I'm a member of other organizations. I have, uh, I've published 200 articles, I know editors. I'm gonna go to the public and say, this is what's going on here. And that's not, not a good look because you know it's simple questions that parents wanna know and you can't provide. Within a half an hour of that, after waiting a month, within a half an hour of that, I get something that says, you know what? We have answers for you. Yes, no, yes, no. Actually on everything except for Pollyanna, they gave answers that were satisfactory. I was like, yeah, we're disbanding these racially parent group, racial parent groups on campus. The DEI committee is basically disbanded for now. We're gonna do it in-house, in in-house in with the faculty, not so much on the outside. You know, on down the line, until they got to Pollyanna, they said, we're continuing with Pollyanna. I said to myself, that's progress. I'm not gonna get, we're not gonna get everything we want. And they followed up and said, you know, can you come in on Monday? And there were three people there a guy I've never seen before, and two um, uh, administrators, and they just essentially handed us an expulsion letter and said, uh, you can read this when you get home, but you're, you're out. And you know, pick, get your kids out and, and go. Our younger daughter was actually homesick that day, so she didn't even get any closure, ironically, so she didn't even get a chance to see her teacher and her friend, and I actually texted both teachers, and they didn't know. And like I said, my one daughter's teacher is the head you know, of the pedagogy, so she was even shocked. And she went to the administrator, and she said, oh my God, is this really happening? I had to read this text three times to absorb it, and uh, she said, I'm just not gonna be able to, I can't cope with the having your daughter not in my class. I cannot believe that she won't be there. And meanwhile, my kids are not getting an education for two weeks. They're crying every day. I'm crying because we, we do love the school as what it is, what it's supposed to be. And that was, that was what was hard to begin with, to see that go. At the end of the expulsion letter, it ends by basically saying something to the effect of, you're still on the hook, in layman's terms, for the contractual obligations that you have for tuition, which means, you know, essentially payment through the year, no matter if they kick you out or not. So we're six weeks into, into the school year when this happens. We're in mid-October, really. So they want payment all the way through the end of the year, the end of the school year in the summer. You're, you're kicking children out in the, in the middle of the year punitively for no reason other than, you know, basically a political or ideological agenda. My older daughter actually really likes her new school. It's actually worked out very well for her. My younger daughter doesn't feel that way. She really misses her old school. She pines for it all the time. She's not really happy in her new school, so it's very difficult. So we've gone through this whole interview without naming the school. It's probably obvious by now, and, and I, I want to tell you why we didn't do it. The institution itself is not monolithic, right? Inside there, you have these ideological fringe actors and activists pushing this stuff, but you also have a lot of excellent teachers we have a lot of excellent parents and families. We're still friends with a lot of these parents. Our kids still hang out and talk to each other all the time. We still have enormous respect for our children's teachers who never instituted any of these things in our kids' classes. It can be a lonely road when you stick your head above water. It can be frustrating because you're doing something that you know is right and you have people who are cheering you on and telling you you're doing the right thing and finally somebody's come along but don't tell anybody I said that. Right. And when you hear that enough times, you start to really get, at least I did, you start to get into a sort of a mental hole about it. You're like, well, if you agree with me, then stand with me. But at the end of the day, you have to look in the mirror, right? You have to look in the mirror and you have to be able to tell yourself, I did whatever I could. And if I die tomorrow and I'm hit by a bus, my kids will know that I tried for them. It's a position of honor to be a teacher or to be an administrator for that, for that matter. You have to stand up too. You have a role too. You went into this business because teaching children was important to you and instilling certain values in them was important to you. 
Stand up when you see people being treated unfairly, when you see children being treated unfairly, when you see them boxed into or stratified according to their skin color. We got over that 60 years ago. What are we doing playing around with those ideas again? Stand up, be the one in the board meeting or in at wherever, not around the water cooler when no one can hear you. Grow a spine and stand up and ask the questions that need to be asked. And then maybe it makes a difference.